Welcome back bike farmers. This is a special episode for me. The first one after uh, reaching the milestone of a thousand subscribers. So thank you all. I turned on ads and I think I've made 50 cents already. Um, this is also a very special episode because I've been working on it for like two months. What do you have here is my custom Waterford Brevet bike. Brevets are what randonneers ride. It's an organized long distance cycling event. Look up randonneering if you don't know about it, but it is crazy long distances. All day on a bike, a lot of times in inclement weather, hence the fenders. Everything's as lightweight as possible, including this frame, which is made of steel, but it is a very fancy uh, True Temper S3 tubing uh, made at Waterford. This is a TIG welded bike. I absolutely love this bike. It's very, very comfortable. It's actually really fast. It climbs like a goat. I just love it. Um, but you know, most of the time I don't need these really big tires. I don't need these really big fenders. I don't need the front rack for the bag. It's overbuilt for what I use most of the time. About six years ago, I had an opportunity to buy another set of True Temper S3 tubing. True Temper no longer makes bicycle tubing. So I had this new old stock set of tubing and I always intended to learn how to either TIG weld really, really well or fillet braze really, really well to handle this ultralight steel tubing and build my own bike. But I just don't have the skills. So when Waterford made their announcement that they were closing, I reached out to Richard Schwinn and asked if uh, Waterford could build up this tube set that I had. And he said, no, 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 the ship has sailed, we're done. Instantly, I thought of Dave Wages at Ellis Cycles. And they're absolutely gorgeous bikes. Check out his website, elliscycles.com. Just does fantastic work, fillet brazing and lugged. He's got a really nice classic aesthetic, but with modern sensibilities. I went to him and I said, hey, I've got this tube set. Would you like to try to do something with it? He said, absolutely. And we will fillet braze it. Fillet brazing really builds a beautiful bike. Now the tubes just kind of blend into one another and it's just, oh man, it's really nice. That was a couple months ago. I showed him this bike. I dug up the old original build sheet from Waterford and sent that to him. He designed a bike based off of that. We talked it through and, and we built the bike. So let me show it to you. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous. I have it set up with 11 speed friction bar and shifting caliper brakes. So very old school, very classic velocity quill rims, man, I'm telling you, I have never ridden a bicycle this nice in my life. I mean, it is so smooth. It is just a joy to ride. Dave let me come over and watch him when he got started. So a little bit of brazing and the dropouts, um, building the fork, that kind of thing. We got some, some torch and grinding and filing footage for you. Um, a lot of pictures along the way. We sent it to our friend Adam in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, uh, NYF paint, very high quality paint job. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, very lame that I uh, painted it the same color as my Dodge minivan, <laughs> but I really think it turned out just beautiful. But I'm really excited to show you the build. Thanks again for all of the subscribers. Yeah, let's get started. This is the Brevet bike, the inspiration for the new bike right after it was first built in 2018. Here's the build sheet from that bike that I sent over to Dave at Ellis Cycles to get started on our design. I'm kicking myself for not getting a picture of the box these tubes came in, but here they are all laid out on the table getting ready to be turned into a bicycle at Ellis Cycles by Dave Wages. And on my way out that first morning, I grabbed some footage of a couple of his personal bikes. This one is his. It's his all road, road bike. Very nice lugged bike. That's his cat. This is his wife's bike, DI2 custom stem and it's beautiful stainless lugs, very polished. He's a true craftsman in every sense of the word. Very, very thorough and good at his job. Very grateful to have the opportunity to have someone like him build a bike for myself. Here's 
Here's a nice shot of Dave showing me his bike CAD design of the bike. And in a minute, he'll click over to the spec sheet. We can take a closer look at that. So, right there it is. The only change he really made to the original design of my Brevet bike is he dropped the bottom bracket 5 millimeters. He liked an 80 millimeter bottom bracket drop, and I just trusted him on that. And again, here's that tube set with the fork crown and dropouts that Dave has had selected and blades. Um, and then these are the custom uh, rear dropouts that he has for LS cycles. He was really excited to do a rim brake bike to actually be able to use some of these dropouts. These are, this is the fork right there, steer tube, blades, and that's his workbench. Pretty cool shot. He does pretty much everything by hand. You know, he doesn't miter the tubes with a mill or anything like that. just some of the preliminary cuts he was making and just blows my mind the vision and the ability to carry it out Just refining the edges and getting it all to look as good as possible. Just one step at a time. Refining, refining, refining. Laser cut Ellis rear dropouts. So, yeah, let's see how it goes. I've had like mixed success with photoing this stuff. The key here is like heating up the whole dropout like really gently. This stainless just doesn't heat up as smoothly and consistently as regular steel. So like trying to get the whole thing hot at the same time. It's tricky. Percentage of our population that are alien human hybrids. And he's got enough circumstantial evidence to kinda make a pretty strong case for it, really. So you don't need to know any of this. Oh. <laughs> he also says that anybody who says that is probably one of them. Oh my god. No, he doesn't really say that. I, said, I just said that. I know. I just think all the hybrids are Democrats. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. So we're a superior, superior well, being, clearly. potentially. Right now, Dave is just soldering on some stainless steel washers for the interface of where the quick release and axle will be hitting the dropouts in the frame. The trick is knowing how much silver to put down there. It's not like a big glob, but it fills all the way around and like there's a nice little filling on the edge.
my face, we got silver up underneath there, and now I'm just kind of floating it to where I need it to be. That's what it looks like before cleanup. But it's nothing compared to the new carbon bites with internals. Right. So now we get the ends in this bus. Oh. Or we got stainless for the drop outs. Drop outs. Yeah. And load the sucker up. Now the forks just practically make themselves at Ellis Cycles. <laughs> yeah. flexed up and jigged up and ready for the torch. Time to glue this thing together. Yeah, I mean, it was all sorts of wrong, but it worked. The audio here is pretty rough, but uh, you know, he's soldering on another one of those stainless steel washers for the interface with the front brake on the fork crown. It's just you know, he keeps the the solder wet and can push it around with his needle nose pliers just with the torch.
Good enough for who it's for. <laughs> Check it out, my new bike. I got the frame here, so I just uh, touched up the wheels, put some new rims on them, got them nice and shiny, and up to, up to snuff. Here's the beautiful, beautiful frame, ready to roll. Got the fork, Rene RSA tires, Selly Anatomica saddle. Well, I got some brown uh, tape for the bars. Some Dura-Ace derailleurs, I'm going friction bar end, uh, Levin speed here, some Rene say cranks, TRP caliper brakes, old school classic. These are uh, some really comfy Ergo um, VO Grand Crew handlebars. I'm super stoked. We're gonna get to building it. I think the first thing we gotta do is uh, face this head tube, get it ready to press in that headset and put a fork on it and get to building. Here we go. All right. Those are the Ellis dropouts. Just to kind of give you a little tour of things here. Brake bridge. That's where my lights are gonna go. Or a rack someday, maybe. Fastback seat stays. Yeah, there we go. Oh, 
my Drumlin logo. He was nice enough to let me put my own logo on a bike he built. I mean, it's my design. He's just the skilled craftsman that can do those fillets. But that's pretty much the frame. Just the seat lug. That's the only one. It's kind of a bilaminate design there. So pretty simple, straightforward road bike. Okay, we got our facing tool here. Ellis Cycles head badge. Dave Wages, he comes from Serata and Waterford. This bike is built right here in Wisconsin. Spray some lube on the cutting edge here. For good measure. And we're just kind of ease into it, sneak up on it, just take off the paint. Just get it nice and nice and flat. Don't want to scratch this beautiful paint. by NYF Paint in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. There we go. Nice, nice and clean. That's just so pretty. A little more lube. Go around a couple times and take a smidge off. Oh, <laughs> that'll help. There we go. Got ourselves a couple of headset cups here. White Industries headset that I had from a previous build. Wonders if I got that right. There we go. All right. No struggles. Get this pressed in and Next step will be to put this race on. This should give us enough to... We don't need a lot of force. All right, just because we saw what happened to the Rivendell, I'm gonna grease this here steer tube. That's good in grease now. little guy goes there and then I'm kind of hoping that this will hold things in place for me while I grab some spacers. I'll remedy that at some point. 
But for now, I'm just going to kind of guess where I think I want to be. So this whole bike is based on a, it's the exact same geometry as another bike that I have, but something like that is going to be pretty close. Now I'm not going to cut anything yet. This allows us to start sticking some parts on. One of my all time favorite things is designing a new bike in my head and thinking about the parts. And I'm really struggling with handlebars these days. But these are the bars that I have on that other bike and I really seem to like them. When I do this initial setup, I just try to get it as close as I can. I don't do measurements and all that. And I find that you can spend a lot of time doing the measurements and you end up changing everything a little bit anyway, so. We get to chase the threads, which is always a good idea anyway. Probably should have started with it. Ooh, that's nice and clean. Also good and tight. Is that not a thing of beauty? Or is that not a thing of beauty? There we go. We just let them shine. No caps needed. All right, let's get some wheels put on this thing. Save you the trouble of watching me mount tires and tubes. And I threw the cassette on there without the camera running. But when you get some wheels on the frame, it starts to look like a bike, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. I gotta be careful of that. Wrap a doohickey on it. Wrap a doohickey. What next? Rear derailleur. So I'm using a wolf tooth road link. Drop a little tri flow on things so it, things slide a little easier. You know, this was like 
real high-end paint job on a real high-end frame. All these surfaces are really perfect. Pretty amazing. And here's a medium cage, which is kind of a long cage with a big pulley wheel. Dura Ace 7700 9-speed derailleur that I'm getting to work with this 11-speed cassette, but it's uh, friction bar end shifting. And I'm told, my sources say, it should work. But the capacity, the max tooth capacity of this derailleur is what's requiring the road link here. And the road link just extends the hanger. So that looks like it should work theoretically. We're gonna find out. I might have to have an extra link in the chain. It's hard to find a silver one of these that would fit too. Let's see what happens. We're good. Yep, just fits. Get that all lined up. Oh, baby. So much shine. All right, big wild guess on this chain. This is the chain that was living with this cassette on another bike. The chain stays are essentially the same size, I believe, but this has the bigger pulley wheels on the derailleur. So, well, you know, there's other factors involved. Yeah, might need to go find some links. I probably should just go do it. But I just wanted to do that. All right, well, we're gonna continue. We're gonna trudge forward. Got these uh, shiny levers. For now. So these are usually reverse thread to tighten. Looks good. Those look about even. Not easy to install. You must have dexterity. But here we go. Man, it was hard to catch that first thread. Really hard. But, oh. This is a direct copy of the old Sun Tour Power Ratchet mechanisms. It's a little bit easier when you know what you're doing. Bar and shifting. 
Very nice. I'll start with the shifter housing. I'm gonna run it here and then up the inside of the bars underneath and then back down. It gets everything out of the way, it gives a nice clean finish. So I got this silver housing, very old school looking, from Simworks. So I'm putting the cable in and then doing the housing just so I know everything's going to line up. Get the hood out of the way. I'm going to come up good and tight and around. And down with a little bit extra. So I'm not moving this hand that marked it. And then I always cut a little extra just to be on the safe side. And clean it up. I'm wondering if I want to go find some fancier ferrules. Yeah, I found some fancy ferrules. So I got some nice four millimeter alloy ferrules here. do is we'll just start taping Okay, double check this again. All right, we're gonna cut that much off. Where you at, buddy? There we go. So that's why I do it this way. I, I put the cable in first. As long as you have the cable here, you can slide it into its home to get the length and everything. And then the idea is, is I'll get the other one to come down with the same angle. So this is where we want to get them just exactly perfect, just so they're not touching.
trim up the end a smidge here. Okay, now I'm pushing my cable through. Here we go. We're going to lube that as we pull through. Feral and into its home. Not exactly sure how big I want this, but cutting some extra just in case. Trimming a little. It feels a little big to me. I knew I was saving these four millimeter alloy ferrules for a special bike. And give it a snip. That's looking pretty good. I think that looks sharp. Huh? Very nice. Cut that nice and short. I gotta dig deep for very small derailleur cable tips. Bend that out of the way. Get this brake on here maybe. Get this rear brake on and then we'll start doing some cables. A little bit of lube on the cable. So it's a plastic tube inside a stainless tube. And I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna cut this to length. Okay, so what I can do is make a mark with the tool, slide it out the end, Find the tool mark and cut it a little bit shorter. Cut this piece of housing to length. Length X.
How does that look? Pretty clean? Clean enough for who it's for? Needs a little adjustment, but we'll get to that. In place. Cut the front housing to length. See how it shifts, huh? No problem. I mean, that's fine. Struggling a bit to get up into the big. I think that's the screw. Uh-oh, that's the problem right there. Let's see how far we can go. Yeah, so I gotta add those links. Okay, gotta go find some 11 speed links. All right, there's our master. I was able to find some 11 speed links and an 11 speed replacement pin. I'm gonna 
favorite chain tool. Feels good. It looks good. I'm going to max out to right there. So we'll take those links off. Okay, so that's little and little. There's enough tension there. Well, it's kind of flopping around, isn't it? Oh, that's because I knocked it off of its pulley. There. That's little and little. And there's just enough tension there. So we'll go up into the big. There's no rubbing there. God, that sounds good. Aha, it's working! Okay, so we're in big and big there, and we've got enough here in the derailleur, so I'm okay with that. But it's rubbing here, so I gotta bring this up and hope it still shifts. This is the unforeseen problems that we come up upon when we do weird things. So first thing we'll check is, okay, so that's okay there. We can still come up more if we need to. And it shifts. Okay. Boom. That's some serious road gearing there. So I'm just like randomly picking spots and it just finds a gear. Why friction? That's why right there. Look at that. Boom, 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 whoa, boom. Anywhere I want. Big hill, whoa, all of a sudden. I don't know why I'd ever need to do that on a road bike, but that is slicker than snot on a doorknob. I'm just gonna, just my brake pads here. I took it for a ride and felt like everything here was stacked up too high. So I took a couple spacers out. Two seemed about right, but I am going to add one on top for good measure. Draw a line. And that's where I'm gonna cut it. That's my plan and I'm sticking to it. But I think I'm ready to cut a fork.
<laughs> Chaos. Yes. Clean that up. Why didn't you guys tell me that I put this bottle cage on upside down? Huh? Why didn't anybody say anything? You know, the whole world's laughing at me. Probably you too. Oh, I deserve this. I deserve what's happening right now. The hardest part about this whole build has been this bottle cage. Can't do it without dropping a screw. I mean, there it looks cleaned up. I'm gonna give it one more test ride before I go find that bar tape. Well, I got the one side done. Well, well, well. It's not bad. Huh? That looks good. Looks real good, folks. <laughs> 